What's up all my ninjas? Today is June 9, 2019, and today I actually want to talk to you about a few things. One being baby beauty. I want to talk to you about one of the dosing options I was discussing with Dev, aka Reef Dudes on Google Hangouts. And I want to talk to you about corals. Talking about coral loss and something that Tristan's Reef pointed out to me the other day on DC Reefers live stream. I also want to talk to you about why I want to get up at 5 a.m. every day. It's a little bit different than most people. It had nothing to do with the habits of successful people. And I want to go over a trade that I think could be a lesson for you guys and a reminder for me. I'm out of breath. All right, but first I want to document a little bit. Today I went, to, uh, last night I went to sleep at about 1 a.m. Today I woke up at 6.30, not quite 5, but hey, I only got like 5 hours of sleep. I woke up today about 194.2 pounds fully dressed, so that's awesome. And last night for my run, I ran it in 6 minutes 19 seconds. That's like a whole like minute and 20 less than we did the day before. And all of that just reminds me of like the like what we talked about in the last video on what gets measured sees results. And it feels good. It feels good to see just, just in a few days or in a few weeks so much progression. In regards to running, we've dropped a minute every single day since we got back into it. Just like two days ago, we were running above eight minutes for the half mile. Now we're down to the six. Soon we'll be in the fives and soon we'll be in the fours. It's crazy how fast your body gets used to something and starts allowing you to push itself if you just put your mind to it. Um, sleeping, we're not quite there yet, but hey, you're talking to someone that used to wake up at like 1 o'clock in the afternoon consistently. So getting up at 6 a.m. is a huge milestone, especially since I am able to do it consistently. And it's just a matter of time before we're getting up at 5. And as for my weight, I've lost about four, 4 pounds in the past like week and a half. So yeah, what gets measured sees success. And this, like, in speaking of that, talking about measured in success or measured in results, actually... Got up this morning a little bit before Steph, did a little bit of work, and then about 30 minutes later, I went downstairs and I saw her sitting on the computer, so I had to ask her. Hey, what you doing? Working on my candle business. I'm restocking the website with new candles. Hey. hey. <laughs> yeah, for those of you that do not know, Stephanie actually creates custom-made artisan candles used for prayer meditation manifesting like whatever it is that you desire it uses herb color scent association to help you do so and she started this company about six months ago and i remember like when she did she was just happy to get one sale a week then it became like well actually she was happy to get one sale a month then it became one sale a week and now she's getting a couple of sales a week and now she's working on her youtube channel she's working on her instagram and seeing huge progression in that we're applying all of the stuff that i used to teach my social media clients and shoot just in the past two months alone her youtube channel has jumped up 600 subscribers so if you're into like astrology metaphysical like law of attraction anything like that Make sure to go check her out, Steph Prisms. Yeah, she'll appreciate it. I'll appreciate it. We'll appreciate it. All right, so let's get into the tank. Since I usually end with the tank, I want to give you guys, like the reefers, a little bit of love first. And I want to talk to you guys about one of the dosing options. When I was talking to Dev, he suggested that instead of dosing like alkalinity or anything like that, why don't I just do like frequent water changes set up an automatic water change and that's possible because i have this dosing pump and i have four heads two of which could be used for the water changes leaving one for amino acids and the other for whatever we want it meaning like if the water changes aren't enough to keep up with the tank's demand we could in like in theory do the um like all in reef that could really work that could work out fantastically honestly because like water changes are amazing my only question is the only thing I just don't like water changes because I mean I feel like they're not really good for the environment I feel like we waste a lot of water but that's a whole different topic now as for corals I want to talk to you guys about some coral 
loss, specifically with the egg cans. So on DC Reefer's live stream, I was talking to Tristan's Reef and we were talking about like first generation, second generation wild caught corals. And we were talking about the further along in the generations, the hardier the corals will be. That if you look at like egg cans that were wild caught, like these ones, I got these were all wild caught. Um, they're much more sensitive to changes in the tank. And you'll notice that the first generation corals that um, came off of that centerpiece are much stronger. He pointed out the fact that if you're able to propagate these corals for a bit and then have like a drastic change in your alkalinity or parameters, that the original wild caught pieces would actually fall off but the first generation, second, third generation are much more likely to stay. And that's exactly what we have here. Look, all of these acans, they're all on the side. All the middle pieces have fallen off or replanted somewhere. And we just have the first and second generation corals sitting there. Now, also want to show you how, can you see it? The Digi's polyps are way more extended now in this tank. The hammer is starting to open up a lot more. And this hammer in the back has like doubled in size. The one in the front always looks good. But yeah, that conversation with Dev is actually why in the last video I included the water changes in the pole. So if you don't mind, if you haven't checked out that video, please do so. Let me know what you think I should do for my dosing solutions because we're trying to figure that out in the near future. Now, a lot of people ask me, like, why do you want to wake up at 5 a.m.? And people always tell me, it's like, oh, you read a book or something, like Seven Habits of Successful People or something like that. And the answer is no, that's not why I personally want to wake up at 5 a.m., that may be why other people want to, but personally, I don't need to wake up at 5 a.m. to go to the gym. I don't really have a ton of people hitting me up and texting me all the time. A lot of my friends are like, we're, we have a, a saying in our friend group. We can grow up separate, but never apart. So it's just one of those things that we're not always texting each other. We're not on each other's back or like feel the need to be communicating all the time. So I don't have distractions like that. For me, it comes down to photography, videography. When we're traveling, if I can get in the habit of waking up at 5 a.m., that's golden hour, meaning the lighting is the best of the entire day. This allows me to take better photos and better videos. On top of that, getting up at 5 a.m., especially when traveling, allows me to go to these tourist destinations with very few people in my photos, meaning that's less work in Photoshop, easier to take my photos. I can take my time, have fun with it, enjoy the stay, and actually get to enjoy these tourist attractions without very many people. And the second reason why I want to get up at 5 a.m. is for trading. The market I trade is most active at 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. and then 5 p.m. to about 2 a.m. With that said, I want to go over this trade. Um, wait, in a second. So I want to get up at 5, 5 a.m. so that I can like digest the market. I can look at the long-term graphs. I can see what's been happening while I've been asleep, and I can make a plan. I can say, if the price goes above this, I'm going to do that. If the price drops below this, I'm going to do this and do so. By the time it gets to 6, 6.30, the market is already reacting to the previous day's action and I personally don't like just getting up foggy headed and just jumping into a trade. With that said, this morning I got up at 6.30 and I missed an opportunity. We're going to go over this. I woke up this morning around here. On a longer term graph you'll be able to see that it's coiling up. We're on the five minute graph. And if it drops below this, that it was going to drop hard. And that's exactly what it did. It dropped below this yellow resistance line 
and the red resistance line. For those of you that trade, this is the Fibonacci like 0.32 um, support resistance line. It dropped under. And instead of just reacting, I waited because just because it dropped under doesn't mean it can't drop back up or pop back up. I wanted it to retest that support and it did that. But the problem is it retested on like a nine candle. A nine candle indicates that we're running out of momentum. In theory, like if a trade's been going on for nine candles, it needs a little bit of breather. It needs to pull back a little bit, consolidate, so that it can continue running in the direction it was. And that's perfectly fine, that's perfectly normal. But there's no way that I was going to sell on a nine candle that's telling me to buy. That just wasn't gonna happen. But once it dropped under that, that TD support line, it's fair game. It dropped, hit the bottom of this trend line, popped back up, and that is where I sold. And this is how it played out. Oh, it's too fast. <laughs> stop it, stop it. All right, we're gonna try that again. Time. Here we go. Boom, boom. Here we go. This is where I sold, and you can see like it's riding that trend line and it starts dropping in my favor, which is cool. Of course, we want it to drop in our favor. Then it starts testing above that trend line, which is a hint that it's gonna pop up. And this is where I got back in the trade for a small profit of about 0.2-0.3%. And the reason why I do this is because I have a rule of going with this trend. When it popped above the trend, the odds were that it was going to start going up. I expected it, let me pause this, I expected it to go back up to that Fibonacci line, this red line here, not the dot one, the line one, and retest that support, and that's when I was going to sell again, and possibly, I believed it was going to take all of this, and that right there is a 2% gain. Instead, <clears throat> It decided to consolidate in a different way because when it comes to consolidation there's two ways to do it it does over time meaning like one to four candles trading sideways or through price means one to four candles of trading in the opposite direction in this instance it ended up trading with time traded sideways and then boom started dropping Drop, 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 drop. Well under my prediction and for about 3%. Now, I could get frustrated because, I mean, I knew it was going to hit that line, but there's a saying in trading, no one ever lost money taking profits. And my goal here is just to make more. I just want to lock in the profits I have and then whatever I miss out, it's not meant to be, it's not mine because there's nothing worse than losing money. And after the couple losses I've had, I want to get a couple wins just to build my confidence up and get that, you know, get that swagger back. <laughs> All right, so I ended up winning about two, like 0.2, 0.3%, and we still have the five o'clock to 11 o'clock market tonight that we're gonna try to get some trades in, but we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait for the right setup. All right, <clears throat> now I think it's a good time to actually go over some comments from the last video. And we'll start with Mike Lemming. Let's see what you got to say. Mike Lemming. Welcome back, my dude. Let's get this tank back on track. I would try a quick fluconazole treatment. It'll clear up the tank in a few short weeks. And he's like, yo, you're trading? Would I need a large initial investment to get started trading? And the answer is no. Trading isn't hard. What's hard is the emotional, like emotions attached with it. But if you're gonna learn how to trade, I suggest three things. Learn your support resistance, learn how to identify a trend, and learn risk management. But yeah, that's like a quick answer. Maybe I'll do a whole video on all that stuff in the future. Let me know if you're interested in it. A few other ones, we got Click Clacks Reef. Boom, there's, there's his tag. Let it focus. Click Clacks Reef, boom. Glad. 
you're back. Nice being able to chat with you in DC's live stream. I I agree, man. It was it was a pleasure talking to you guys about cameras and what you guys should do to or what you guys can do to elevate your like editing game and help you guys along the way. If you ever need any help, do not hesitate to contact me. I'm here for you guys. Uh, Reefer on the fringe. Shout out to you. SC Reefer. Where you at? SC Reefer. Big A looks good. Hit us up sometime. TRSCAquatics.com. Brother, I have already checked it out. Tristan was telling me all about your company. I want to say congratulations. And if you are watching this and you haven't checked them out, make sure to do so. I'm not saying this because they're longtime supporters or friends. I'm saying this because I went to their website and the corals look amazing. The prices were amazing. And if I was in the market to buy something right now, I would probably order from them. Guys, just give them a look. It costs nothing to just check out their channel or check out their webpage. And you might end up really liking it. <clears throat> Derek Fish, this is going to be the last one. Boom, there's the tag. Let it focus. I like the sound of the direction you're going in. It seems very balanced. I'll be along for the ride. And I appreciate your ongoing support. I really do. It means more than you could ever imagine, brother. But I think that's where I'm going to leave you all today. Feels like I've been talking for 20 minutes. <laughs> Could you imagine if I tried to edit this video? But in the comments below, let me know if you guys have any questions about photography, videography, trading, um, SEO, fitness, like what are your, fit everything, anything, or just like chat with me. It's all good. It's all friends here. I can't wait to see us all progress together. And while you're down there, hit that like button, subscribe, tap that bell, stay positive, and don't forget to do amazing things. <sighs> Like shimmy up to the top of a mountain, find yourself a mountain lion, put it on a leash, and then take it around while you go support your friends and family. I'm talking about the people that are chasing their dreams. How about like going to the website trscaquatics.com and supporting SE Reefer and Tristan's Reefs and checking out Steph Prism, like her YouTube channel and what she's doing. Guys, support those that are chasing their dreams. It's always a good time. All right, peace.